Before the beginning, there was nothing. No earth, no heavens, no stars, no sky. Only the mist world, formless and shapeless. And the fire world, always burning. In Jotunheim, the home of the giants, is Mimir's well. Mimir, the wise one, the guardian of memory, knows many things. His well is wisdom. The ash tree grows between the nine worlds and joins them each to each. The dragon Midhog lives in these waters and it is always gnawing at the root from below. At the edge of the flame stood Sota. He will go forth from Muspel with his flaming sword and burn the world with fire and one by one the gods will fall before him. Well, hello. Good afternoon, our time anyway, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This is Dark Horse Comics, and we are here to go through the new comic book day releases with you today. Um, so I am joined today by editor Daniel Chabon. Hey, Dan. Hey. Thank you for joining us once again. It's kind of a big week for you. Yeah, I got a lot of comics uh, coming out today. A lot of comics and comic shops and we have some graphic novels and other books too which we're going to talk about um they are typically released in comic shops first and then two weeks later in uh, bookstores and wherever books are sold so some of these you can get in about two weeks at bookstores but we're still going to show you today because comic shops get them first uh also with us today we have anthony morrow who is my colleague in uh, dark horse marketing hey anthony hey how's it going everybody thanks for joining us everybody of course so we have a lot of exciting things to tell you about. And we're gonna dive into the new releases in just a few minutes here. First, I'll run through a couple of quick things about the stream. Uh, we are gonna run a giveaway as usual. And what you will win is a copy of every single issue, new release that we will discuss in a few moments here. So that's a pretty sweet prize pack. We have some really cool new releases. Um, so stay tuned. We're going to go through all of them in just a few minutes to enter the giveaway. If you're participating in the live chat, uh, just enter the keyword once and only once and it will be counted. We'll draw a winner near the end and that keyword is Odin. O-D-I-N. That's all you need to do. And uh, like I said, we'll draw a winner near the end of the stream. Um, so everything we're going to talk about today, as I said, is available in comic shops starting now. I'm going to let Anthony tell you a little bit more about, you know, how to find comic shops near you if you need so yeah. So if uh, you are wanting to find a comic shop or have forgotten where a comic shop is because 2020 <laughs> is hellscape, uh, go to comicshoplocator.com. You can put in your zip code and it'll uh, populate every comic shop that's closest to you and you can go find and take your pick. Um, we, of course, encourage you all to shop locally if you can, um, especially for your graphic novels and art books we know. Amazon is a great resource for a lot of things, um, but if you can support your local bookshops um, and you can find a lot of uh, local bookshops with online stores at, um, I believe it's indiebound.org. Kara, correct me if I'm wrong on that URL. Oh, perfect. Um, so as Kara said, pretty much everything we're talking about here today, you can go pick up at a comic shop or at a bookstore with a couple of exceptions. Um, those being uh, some of the exclusive comic bundles and our convention exclusives which you can get at direct.darkhorse.com and we will tell you all of those in detail momentarily 
Um, we have one digital sale going on right now. Uh, so we, we do have our own digital website, Dark Horse Digital, and that's digital.darkhorse.com, or it's available as an app on iOS and Android. Um, all of our digital comics are typically available on uh, Comixology and Google Play and other sites like that as well. But we are offering all month long in October a special horror digital sale because at Dark Horse, we love horror. We publish a lot of horror. So this digital sale, everything is 50% off. That includes single issues and graphic novels and even some art books. Um, you can get series like Alien, Predator, Hellboy, BPRD, Beasts of Burden, one of my personal favorites, Harrow County, all those um, classics and newer originals. So check those out at digital.darkhorse.com. Um, and there's a lot on there. I mean, there's over 50 pages to browse through. So don't stop at like page one. <laughs> Um, and that's that's our main big digital sale for the whole month. So that's that's it for digital sales. We are going to run through a couple of recent announcements as well, and then we'll dive into those new releases. And so uh, yeah. Anthony's going to tell you first. We have a uh, New York Comic Con is going yes. virtual, so we've got a few announcements around that. Yeah. So um, as we all know, if this was a normal year, today would be day one of New York City Comic Con. Um, as it stands this year, we're all doing the quarantine from home thing. So they have their virtual, what they're calling metaverse. And to support that, we have a virtual shop at digital nope, direct.darkhorse.com um, that has our convention exclusive web store on there. So we have our um, Christian Ward variant cover for American Gods. We have our uh, Matt, Kit, Matt Kent Bang sketch cover our uh, Christian Ward variant cover for Black Hammer Justice League, um, our Babs Tar variant for Vox Machina Origins Series 1, um, our Critical Role Vox Machina Origins pin, Cyberpunk Night City pin, our Hellboy Secret of Destruction Anniversary Edition number one, um, a Machine Gun Wizards book plate um, that is, you know, uh, Christian Ward's and Sammy Kavila's uh, creator own series that we put out last year. We have uh, a convention exclusive for StarCraft Scavengers issue number one. We have a Glow in the Dark variant for Stranger Things number one. We have a Dragon Prince pin. We have our Umbrella Academy Mike Mignola variant cover. Uh, we have our Christian Ward X ray robot variant cover. And we have our um, Xerxes gold foil variant cover um, by Frank Miller. So you can find all of that in our convention exclusive shop at direct.darkhorse.com. There's a lot of Christian Ward. A lot of Christian Ward. I just realized that going through this list, I'm just like, this is a lot of Christian Ward. You say his name three times and he pops up on Zoom. <laughs> There's a, a, well, yeah, that um, Christian, if, if it's not like the middle of the night for you in the UK, <laughs> you've yeah. been summoned. Um, that X-ray robot cover too, I, I like to call that out because uh, that was going to debut at Emerald City Comic Con earlier this year, which of course was the first one to kind of fall victim to the COVID outbreak. Um, so we weren't able to release it as plans, um, but the cover art for it is inspired by Nirvana's Nevermind album cover. And so it was kind of timed with Seattle at Emerald City Comic Con. So just a you know, fun little tie-in. Now, now you know why. Um, each variant cover for X-Ray Robot is um, kind of an homage to a classic album cover. So that one, I, I just really like it. We love Christian Ward's art, obviously, and he does these amazing variants for a lot of our convention exclusives. Yeah. Um, multiple Eisner Award winner Christian Ward <laughs> does a bunch of our convention exclusives, which is great. And so we, there aren't a whole lot of panels uh, involved in New York Comic Con this year, but they are offering um, a selection of some virtual panels that you can watch on YouTube. And so Dark Horse does have one panel um, that will be on Friday, October 9th, and it's 12.55 p.m. Eastern time, 9.55 a.m. Pacific time. We're in Pacific time here, um, so I always tend to hit that time uh, in my own brain. But so it's kind of early in the morning if you're on the West Coast, like we are um, about midday if you're on the East Coast. But the title of the panel is Creating Worlds, Building a Comics Universe for the Ages. And we have some of our um, comics creators, writers, 
who mostly work on creator owned and also some licensed comics. And they're gonna do a discussion about working in those worlds, especially the, the creator owned ones. And so the participants are Jody Hauser, who you know, she writes kind of everything for Dark Horse. She writes uh, Stranger Things, the Critical Role Vox Machina series. Um, she's also done Starcraft, for example. So very prolific. Um, Nettie Okorafor, who is also the Eisner and Hugo Award winner for LaGuardia with Dark Horse. Uh, Chris Roberson, who writes for Witchfinder and iRobot. And Jean Lun Yang, who of course is one of the writers on Avatar The Last Airbender. And, you know, a few others that just won Harvey Awards like Superman uh, Smashes the Clan and, you know, a few other, few other books like that. So very exciting lineup for that panel. Again, that's on Friday, October 9th, 12.55 um, p.m. Eastern and uh, three hours early or later, um, earlier, time zones are difficult, um, on the Pacific side of the coast. So uh, that's our main panel. That is on the New York Comic Con website and their schedule, which is live now. And then we also have a joint panel with Sci-Fi because Resident Alien, which is a comic series that is published by Dark Horse, uh, is being made into a sci-fi series it's been delayed by COVID just like everything else, but um, this is a kind of a nice way to revive and get the energy going around it again. Um, this panel is also on Friday, October 9th. This one is at 4.55 p.m. Eastern time, 1.55 p.m. Pacific time. Um, it's a sneak peek and panel featuring executive producer and the cast. So you'll be the first to see 10 minutes of the new series, the first episode. Um, and then they'll be followed by a virtual Q&A with Alan Tudyk, you might know him from, you know, Firefly and Rogue One. He's the star of Resident Alien, the new series. Um, writer and executive producer Chris Sheridan from Family Guy will also be there, as will cast members Sarah Tomko, Corey Reynolds, Alice Wetterland, and Levi Fisher. Um, it's going to be moderated by IGN editorial manager Laura Prudhomme. So we're pretty excited about that. Like I said, you'll get you'll be the first to see live um, the first 10 minutes of the new series. And I think they'll give you some more updates on uh, what's going on with the series. So yeah. check that out, Resident Alien. Again, it's based on a Dark Horse creator owned comic. So check it out. Yeah, if you wanna catch up on that comic, we have uh, Resident Alien Omnibus Volume One, which collects the first three graphic novels in the Resident Alien series. Um, that is for sale currently, as well as um, the sixth arc of the series resident alien your rides here which is going to be launching uh the issue one in comic shops later this year or early next year i'm forgetting the exact date but you can go pre-order that at your local comic shop right now it's a great sci-fi series like science fiction not the network um and i think you would enjoy it if you have not yet checked it out there's a lot to catch up on too a lot of a lot of uh, volumes to read Yes, and it's it's very it's very good. Um, Peter Hogan, Steve Parkhouse, they killed it. It's a very at times funny, at times heartbreaking, all the time heartwarming series. Um, it's incredible. It's, it's a really good uh, series. If anybody's looking for a COVID read right now, uh, highly recommended. So that that kind of wraps up our New York Comic Con coverage for now. Um, con exclusives, get those virtually on our uh, Dark Horse Direct store and then those couple of panels. And we'll remind you about those on Dark Horse social media throughout the week too. So check back in for that. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, the usual. Then we have a couple of other announcements that have come out just recently. Um, one I think Anthony's pretty excited for. Yeah, so earlier this week, we announced uh, through Dark Horse Direct um, the True Lives of the Fabulous Killjoys National Anthem Number 1 variant comic bundle. Um, so for some of our series, uh, what we like to do, or what the folks at Dark Horse Direct like to do, is uh, create an exclusive variant cover and lithograph print that they sell together. Um, this one is $49.99, and it is... Uh, a variant cover for the new Killjoy series written by Gerard Way, Sean Simon, um, illustrated by Leonardo Romero. Um, this variant cover is illustrated by Daniel Warren Johnson. Um, on the comic itself, it's a black and white variant cover, which looks super cool and super clean. It's just the artwork on the comic. And the uh, print itself is colored by Mike Spicer. Um, it's printed on rose colored paper, uh, which really kind of gives it a very cool uh, pink tint to the rest of the artwork. And um, it's it's just really cool. It's a really cool variant we, we were able to get done for um, 
Gerard's new comic. So everybody should check that out on direct.darkhorse.com. Um, again, it will it's retailing for forty nine ninety nine. Uh, it's limited to 300 copies too. So if you want one, get in on it now. Yeah, most of our uh, Dark Horse Direct exclusives are limited. So yeah. make sure make sure you get on it quickly in, if you are determined to get one. And then one final announcement before we dive into the rest of our new releases today. Um, we are very excited to announce at last that we are going to host a special live Twitch stream uh, later this week on Friday. There's a lot happening on Friday, October 9th. Um, ours will be a bit later in the day though, so you can still catch the New York Comic Con panels in the morning or morning our time. And then later on, you can join us back here on uh, twitch.tv slash darkhorsecomics here on this channel, also hosted by Wizards of the Coast official D&D &D channel because we're hosting a Stranger Things and Dungeons and Dragons live stream. So. Very excited to make this happen. Um, Stranger Things and Dungeons and Dragons is a new comic series that will be beginning uh, next month, actually. And so in order to get you familiar with it, get you excited about it, uh, we're going to be doing this stream with some of the creators on the Stranger Things comics and also a special guest from the Stranger Things Netflix series, um, Matthew Modine, who plays Dr. Brenner. We'll be doing a, a drop-in and he'll come in and chat and say hello to fans uh, near the beginning of the stream. So check in on that. Um, it starts at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so 12, or sorry, 6 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Um, again, that's this Friday, October 9th. And we're going to welcome Jody Hauser, Jim Zub, Nate Picos, Greg Pock, and Danny Lore as our guests who will do a panel about the comics, Stranger Things and Dungeons and Dragons, and also just our, our kind of larger Stranger Things comics universe. We've been doing comics with Stranger Things for a while now, so there are several volumes, mostly written by uh, Jody Hauser, but um, we've also got some young adult uh, books in the line with uh, mostly written by Greg Pak and Nate Pico's letters, all of them. Um, Jim Zub has come on for the Stranger Things in D&D &D series specifically because he's a longtime writer with the other D&D &D comics at IDW, and so it's a really great crew. We're excited to bring them together. They're going to play a game of the Stranger Things D&D &D adventure following the panel. So it's a combo stream. We'll have a short panel first. Matthew Modine, Dr. Brenner is going to join us for a little bit of that. And then we'll dive right in and we're going to play some D&D. So tune in. Again, that's on Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we are going to slay some Demogorgons and I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Roll some dice. So pretty, pretty stoked for that. Um, come back on Friday. We'll be here on Twitch live once again. Um, and that's it. That's it for our announcements. We've had a lot of other stuff come up recently. So uh, if you haven't checked in on our streams on previous weeks, you can still see all of those news articles on our website too. It's darkhorse.com slash blog. So lots of news, see the details of like the Killjoys uh, special cover that Anthony was just talking about, all that good stuff on our website. And uh, without uh, further ado, I'm gonna let Dan take it away because we wanna talk about Norse mythology. Yeah. Oh, never heard of it. Yeah. Well, it's quite who's, who's that guy, Neil? It was a number one New York Times bestselling book, Anthony. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and Anthony. this is the adaptation. Uh, so the first issue came out today, which is really exciting. It was actually going to come out a few months ago, but COVID obviously pushed lots of things back. But today's the day you can go out in stores and get it. Uh, it's the first issue of 18 issues. This issue uh, features all the words written by Neil, Neil uh, from the book. Uh, it's adapted uh, by P. Craig Russell, who's one of his long-term collaborators. And there's art in the book by Mike Mignola, Jerry Ordway, uh, colors by Dave Stewart and Laverne Konzerski. And uh, Galen Showman did all the lettering in the book. It's all hand-lettered. Um, and it's really exciting. The artwork is fantastic. It's really neat to see uh, Mignola and Neil Gaiman collaborate. Uh, I don't think they've collaborated for a long time now. Um, the last thing I remember, they may have done a collaboration on a Hellraiser comic years ago. Um, but it's a really cool book. Uh, this issue is uh, mostly just an origin story of the beginning of the Norse myth. So if you're a fan of mythology or of Neil Gaiman, I would definitely pick it up. And then uh, we also are doing, in addition to uh, this comic, there's a special Dark Horse Direct bundle uh, that we're doing. 
where uh, we have a print drawn by Bill Sienkiewicz of Thor. And it's printed on this like special holographic foil. It's really cool. So the print itself is 11 by 14. And then there's uh, a comic that will come with it. There was one comic that was signed by Bill, but those had already sold out, unfortunately. But I believe we still have 200 unsigned comics for $50 that you can get on direct.darkhorse.com. So yeah, it's, it includes the variant cover and the like fine art print. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I should also say there's a great variant cover uh, for the uh, for the comic by uh, David Mack, whose birthday is today. So if you're watching, David, happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday. So. David Mack. Yeah. Does all these all beautiful the, uh, variants for like all of our Neil Gaiman books, basically. Yeah, he, he did all the variants for um, American Gods, yeah. which were all great. Yeah. 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 I'm so happy uh, to finally to finally have this comic out in the world. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really pretty. And it's cool to have a comic where Neil Gaiman's doing gods again. Yeah. He's really good at, at writing those gods. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> good, um, good job on the gods, Neil. <laughs> yeah, good job, Neil. American gods, <laughs> these gods, and <laughs> Sandman. So, uh, Sandman. Yeah, I was going to say Sandman, yeah. Yeah. After after Norse mythology, I'm just gonna say like, it would be cool if we also got to do a Nazi boys. Good, yeah, that's a that's a big book, Kara. It's gonna take some time. Are are you saying that Norse mythology and American gods are not? That is true. So <laughs> it's good to consider for sure. I'd be curious what other people would like to see as an adaptation. So yeah, uh, one thing that crossed my mind was uh, Ocean at the end of the lane too. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm I'm a big Neil Gaiman fan and reader, so I like any anything we have already adapted and could potentially do in the future. Mm -hmm. I I would love to see. Um, graveyard book. Yeah, that was already oh, I love done. Book. I Is it? Yeah. Well, cool. I did not know that. Yeah, I have so, a copy in my office. Uh, if we ever, if civilization go back to ever goes back to normal, <laughs> <laughs> it's underneath the cobwebs. So. We shall see. I know. I went back to the uh, office early last week, and it's a ghost town. Yeah, you saw a tumbleweed go by, and yeah, my desk was buried under a mountain of books. You know. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a handful of folks that that have been going in still, like almost daily, actually. But they're the only ones holding down the fort. Most of us are all working from yeah. home. I was actually yeah. here this morning. I'm just all play right. <laughs> I uh, I go in Everybody periodically to water all the pick up things like these exciting advances and to make sure that our giveaways uh, all get shipped out or sent to our shipping team who handle that stuff which yes I saw a question in chat a second ago um, we are running a giveaway as always uh, it's live now enter the keyword that our bot is reminding you about it is Odin O-D-I-N because of Norse mythology and uh, just enter it once, you'll be counted. We'll draw a winner near the end of the stream and you win a copy of all of these single issues that we are discussing today as part of new comic book day. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, Neil Gaiman's Norse Mythology is the big new series starting and we're gonna be doing this one for a while now. Uh, Dan, mm -hmm. can you tell folks about like the planned progression of the issues? Yeah, we broke it up into um, six issue uh, mini series uh, and arcs. So starting this month and for the next six months, we'll have the first six issues and then there'll be a short break. And then we're going to start uh, with the next six, uh, probably about two or three months in between. And then same after the 12th issue. So it'll be, uh, it'll be over a year getting all these out, but um, the first collection actually will come out pretty close to when the sixth issue comes out as well. Mm -hmm. so. So lots more Norse mythology to look forward to. Yeah. It's not too bad when American Gods was 27 issues, I think. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. 18, 18 manageable. Yeah. Three, three arcs of nine. Yeah. that it, it, I, it became like a nice monthly regular feature, though, for us. Yeah. yeah. Quite a long time. And now it's collected in those really nice hardcovers that I, I like a lot. Mm. Well, we do uh, have a lot of other uh, 
large, important new releases today. Norse mythology is kind of the crown, the jewel in the crown, I think. But uh, mm -hmm. we have a few others you might have heard of, too. I'm going to let Anthony tell you about the next one. Yes. Yeah, so uh, today, Alien, the original screenplay number three, is out in comic shops. Um, it is adapted from the screenplay written by Dan O'Bannon for the very first Alien movie. Um, it is adapted by Cristiano Cx's. I believe I'm pronouncing his name horribly wrong, and I apologize. <laughs> Um, and it's illustrated by Guillaume, Guillaume Baldi, um, colored by Candace Hahn, uh, standard cover by Guillaume and Candace, and a variant cover by uh, Walter Simonson and Dave Stewart coloring. Um, so that is our very last Aileries uh, we are publishing as a publisher, and it is a very, very one. We're very, very lucky and grateful to be able to, to get you guys the... Um, Alien, the original screenplay out um, in a similar vein as um, the Alien 3 uh, screenplay adaptation. And um, it's fun. It's a fun one. Yeah, the creative team believe, is very excited about it. Yeah, we had, um, I don't know if there's still any copies left, but we had much like the Norse mythology and Killjoy's Dark Horse Direct variant, we had one for Alien, the original screenplay as well. And I'm unsure about quantity levels about that. So, so Dan, um, you edited this one as well. The alien one? Yeah. Uh, are, are you not on the series? I did the no. William uh, Gibson alien. That's yeah. right. And, and Dead Orbit Orbit right. One. So yeah. those were my two big goals uh, before aliens went to Marvel. Yeah. Alas. Yeah, for anybody who didn't already hear the news, uh, 20th Century Fox, of course, actually owns the franchises of Aliens and Predator. And so uh, they have, after 30 plus years of Dark Horse publishing for both of those um, franchises, they have decided to move it along. Um, they are, of course, you know, kind of together under the umbrella with Marvel and other companies. So alas, Dark Horse will not be publishing any more Alien or Predator comics. This is our last, our last series, like Anthony mentioned. So uh, make sure to get these and yep. all of our previous Alien and Predator books, which are available at comic shops and bookstores now, uh, because once we go into 2021, Dark Horse will no longer be able to um, sell or distribute those at all. So get them while you can. Mm -hmm. Get them while they're hot. And this is the original screenplay is a very, very fun series. It's if you're an alien fan, this is something you're for sure going to want to pick up and for sure going to want to read. It's just a different familiar story. And um, if you're at any level of fan at all, like me, it is just a real treat to look at. So, yeah, the art, the art is gorgeous. I, I really like the main cover art for well, for all of these, but I like this one. Especially. Yeah, it's it's kind of following the uh the cover treatment that dan i guess you laid out for the uh william gibson alien 3 covers yeah. um, and it's just it's a cool cover treatment i think it looks really clean it looks really neat spooky yeah. i think with the on. gibson one we we're trying to just go for something like the old school movie poster yeah 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 i think that's why in my mind you're like still involved with all of these <laughs> Yeah, that one was, I mean, I did that Gibson one just because I was such a big fan of his writing and I knew that that was kind of a, a cult screenplay that existed. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we got a lot, a of, lot of fun to work about... with and he was a part of it. He got a approval, well, he got to review a lot of the art and stuff as it was coming in. So um, it was neat to see like an unfilmed movie have another life. And I've always been kind of interested in that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think. It, as as Anthony was saying too, like these these are definitely a good read for fans of the Aliens franchise. Um, yeah. I I enjoy getting these other versions of the story. It's this series is very different from you know the Alien movie that we ended up with, of course. Yeah. So it's fun and interesting, and has different characters, and the aliens look quite different. Well, this is just the beginning of actually a quite a large uh, release week for us. Um, so also out this week, I don't have a physical copy of it to show you, but we're going to switch gears a little bit from single issues to a manga. Uh, you may have heard of this manga before. It's a bit of a classic. 
Uh, we're very excited to release the next deluxe edition manga. Um, we have been doing deluxe editions for Berserk and for Helsing, and now we are excited to bring you Blade of the Immortal in the deluxe oversized hardcover format that has been so uh, well received with Berserk and Helsing. So now you get to see all of the original art by Hiroaki Samura uh, for Blade of the Immortal in this larger, you know, more authentic format. And these deluxe editions, it's not leather bound, it's kind of a faux leather cover, um, very nice textured um, color artwork on the covers and with a ribbon bookmark um, to hold your place in these massive tomes. Um, Blade of the Immortal, of course, is a classic. Uh, we have our young girl and she is on a quest for revenge. And I don't know, if, did you guys see the movie adaptation that came out a couple of years ago? It was like slasher samurai film. It was... uh, parts of it, it's by uh, Takashi Miike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, that was nice because I think it, it introduced more people to the manga. Like some, so we gained um, some new interest in, in the manga at that point. And yeah, he's a cool director, he's great. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I mean, is it the greatest movie of all time? No, but I enjoyed it. They can't um, be Captain Ron. <laughs> so uh, Blade of the Immortal, these deluxe editions, just like our other deluxe edition manga, they collect a few volumes in one. So this collects volumes one through three in a seven by 10 inch serialized format, uh, bound, as I said, in a faux leather hardcover and um, with a nice ribbon so you can keep your place. And we will continue to put these out. Um, you can see uh, the next one up for pre-order on our website, darkhorse.com. And uh, a common question for this, I'll, I'll touch on it briefly, but a common question we get is, will this be flipped? Uh, yes, the original files that we still work with are the ones that have been um, localized for a Western audience. So we are still working from those. Um, but again, uh, they are beautifully done. They were actually done very custom for this series. This series um, first came to Dark Horse a couple decades ago now, and um, they kind of invented a new lettering process for this manga. So we've been sharing an article on our social media by the editor on the series, Philip Simon, um, which kind of explains how that process was developed and um, like the custom lettering that I mentioned, how that came to be and, and why we have continued to use this format for these deluxe editions. So they really are beautifully done. And if you're a fan of the Blade of the Immortal manga, Highly recommend you check this out. Available uh, comic shops now and bookstores in two weeks. And now I think we are back to Dan. He's gonna tell you about the next on our new releases. Yeah, so uh, we have out today the World of Black Hammer Library Edition Volume One. This is the first uh, oversized hardcover collection that collects some of the uh, tie-in miniseries that we've been doing in the Black Hammer universe. Um, if you haven't been reading Black Hammer, it's Jeff Lemire's uh, Eisner award-winning series that he does with uh, artist Dean Ormston. Um, it's kind of a bizarre homage to the different eras in uh, superhero literature. And so this uh, collection, these tie-ins, um, Feature two different books that we did. One called Sherlock Frankenstein. It was written by Jeff and drawn by a Spanish artist named David Rubin, who is awesome. And uh, another book called Doctor Andromeda uh, that is by an equally awesome artist named Max Fiomara. Uh, so Sherlock Frankenstein is kind of uh, like a weird crime mystery story that features the daughter of Black Hammer trying to figure out what happened to her dad. And so she's interviewing a lot of the villains that he fought in each chapter to kind of figure out what led to his disappearance and where he might be. And then uh, Dr. Andromeda is uh, kind of, it's a very melancholy uh, story that uh, is about fathers and sons when, and kind of the transferring of the mantle of being a superhero. Um, Definitely worth checking out if you like a good cry, but yep. it's a, an amazing book. Very uh, sad. Beautiful book, but yeah, it might make you a little sad, especially at the end. So, um, it's gorgeous. But, I Fiumara's art in that book is just phenomenal. Yeah, he's outstanding, and his brother is a great artist too, Sebastian Fiumara. Mm -hmm. uh, they're both twins, so 
I remember I was at a New York Comic Con once and they were both there. And the only difference I remember was a soul patch on one of them. <laughs> so it was definitely, a, there was a point where I confused one with the other. I was like, oh shit, sorry. Yeah, yeah. they came to uh, Emerald City Comic Con a couple years ago. And yeah, aside from like different clothing. <laughs> yeah. Like been... ba Gabriel Bond, and Fabio Noon, like they look different yeah. from each other, even though they're twins. I think but, they, they deliberately cultivate, like they each have a look, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, it helps other people tell them apart. But the yeah. Fiumaras are very close looking. So. so if one showed up without the other one, it's just kind of like, Max, Seba. <laughs> Ah, yeah. I'm sure they're used to it. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I they that that, like, prank yeah. people. I would use it to my to leverage. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I absolutely would have added to one. I, well, I it, definitely think they should prank people. If you don't know what the camera is, you should or or might just go straight to evil. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 for anybody who doesn't know who Black what Black Hammer is, go back and watch the live stream from two weeks ago because we talked camera ad nauseum. Yes, I mean, we can do so again today, uh, but, and kind of as we touched on last time, so last, a uh, couple weeks ago, we had the Black Hammer Library Edition, uh, Volume 2, so we talked a bit about the differences between, like, what is World of Black Hammer and what is just Black Hammer, um, mm -hmm. so as Dan said in this one, um, the World of Black Hammer, that collects all the many, the many series that are not, like, the main farm story basically hmm. and Dan, you've got some some more coming up in the library edition collection correct? yeah i think of what's been announced uh so far the next one will have uh a series called the quantum age which is drawn by uh wilfredo torres and then um black hammer 45 which was uh drawn by matt kent so um, and there should be more down the road. Yeah. So there'll probably be one that features Skull Digger, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, all the other tie-ins that we've been doing in this universe. Yeah. Uh, we do have a, a new series coming up with Tyler Crook called Cosmogog, which is another Black Hammer miniseries, and then Barbalian with Tate Bromble and Gabriel Walta and Jordi Bilar and um, Aditya Bidikar. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot cooking and there's a lot that hasn't been announced yet. So probably some really cool stuff here soon. Yep. And Cosmogog, yeah. that one focuses on Colonel Weird. Yeah. Yes. That, so we're that's of, fully painted like Harrow County. Yeah. I believe last last time we were all on stream together, this group anyway, we talked I talked about Colonel Weird, and that was that issue one made me cry. It's a good one. It's weird to yeah. see Tyler Crook's art too, because it almost it just looks like he gets better and better with each new comic he works on. I, I was gonna say on Colonel Weird blew me away. Yeah. Um, yeah. You don't usually notice things in, in comics paintings where how artists are using like light and mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff there with like how he uses the sun in certain mm -hmm. uh, panels. It just stands out. There's just a tragic humanity he's able to emote with uh, Colonel Weird uh, at that entire issue and everything that, that entire issue that's just it's just heartbreaking to look at yeah really beautiful way so yeah. maybe you do more sad comics I love that comic that's <laughs> I, I, just, I like that in comic form <laughs> emo emo boys I you know I grew up with the Black Parade so I don't know what's <laughs> We got those covered. Yeah, yeah. we do. The I, um, I kind of feel like all of these Black Hammer stories. I mean, they're so, especially as we dive into the character explorations even more, they're all very um, poignant and emotional. Uh, yeah. So if if you haven't tried Black Hammer, uh, we all recommend it highly. And you can kind of start anywhere. Um, you obviously start with the main series, but uh, some of the side series too are are good starting points. I think. For sure. Honestly, yeah, honestly, you could pick up the World of Black Hammer Volume One and read both of those stories without having read any of the camera and still a lot out of it. Have the standalone stories for you. You don't need anything else for context, really. 
And uh, Dan, can you talk a little bit about, so the cover art for each of these library editions, um, are we, so we're seeing Dean Ormston on all of these, correct? Yeah, so he's doing actual, um, these like beautiful paintings of a lot of the characters that are featured in the books. So, so this book has a, uh, a painting by Dean of uh, Sherlock Frankenstein, and Dr. Andromeda. So. And some tentacles hinting at another character. Yeah, <laughs> a little Cthulhu action in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I do. I like the, yeah, the, the Cthulhu and Cthulhu stories. The the cover for World of Black Hammer Volume Two is probably my favorite Dean painting cover so far. Yeah, you might see more Cthulhu or Cthulhu down the road. So maybe. Yeah, my hope is some Golden Goose comics, but yeah, I do every character. Golden Goose mm -hmm. and Golden Gale like partnership, I, I would love to see it. Yeah. Just saying. Or Inspector Insect Air. There's a ton. You, horseless Rider, that's who I want. I want Horseless Rider. Horseless Rider would be good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Uh, if, if Jeff ever actually watches one of these streams, um, now you know, now you know. Some ideas for you. Jeff? <laughs> not like he needs more. Me, I don't me. know how like he must be one of the hardest working people on the planet frankly um, yeah well as much as we love black hammer and could probably talk about it all day uh we do have a lot more new releases so um anthony i think there's another one that you might be kind of excited about uh yeah so uh today cyberpunk 2077 trauma team issue number two comes out um obviously it's a semi-prequel story to the um, CD Projekt Red game that is coming out relatively soon. Um, and it is written by Colin Bunn, who uh, is the writer on series like Manor Black and Hero County, which we just briefly mentioned in that little Black Hammer segment we just did. Um, it's illustrated by Miguel Valderrama, um, colored by Jason Wordy, with uh, a very actually cool, I really like this cover a lot, this cool cover done by uh, Miguel Valderrama. So if anybody is excited at all about cyberpunk, if y'all like dystopic hypertech futures, uh, if y'all are craving a little bit of Blade Runner, um, check these out, they're super cool. Cyberpunk 2077, you might've heard of it. Yeah, just a, just a little, just a little game, you know. They were, it was kind of cute. I saw earlier today that um, CD Projekt Red were sharing on their social media how excited they were that it's really happening as in no more delays. It's going to come out at the time that we said it would. So <laughs> yay! Uh, soon, soon you'll have the game. But until then, uh, we also have our amazing art book, The uh, World of Cyberpunk 2077, which is out now. Um, really beautiful. If you like this, this kind of cyberpunk style um very detailed so it'll maybe help tide you over and then this original story too which um i was really happy to see when i just when i found out that uh miguel valderrama was on this series actually because we published uh, giants by miguel and his brother um a couple of years ago now and that was when i first became acquainted with these uh two artists and i'm just excited to see him back i think he's a really good fit for the cyberpunk series so Congrats to the Valderrama brothers and to Miguel. Um, Colin Bunn is also one of my favorite writers. So yeah. great team. <laughs> Harrow County is great. Manor Black is great. Yeah, um, if you were looking for a spooky read uh, this this October, I recommend both of those. Yeah. And Death Follows. It's a good one. Mm -hmm. He did he do the damned? Did he write the damned? Yes. Yeah. Uh, for Oni? Yeah. Yeah, and the Six Gun is a great book. Yeah, Six Gun is great. That's what made me approach Cullen uh, to do Harrow County. Well, man, um, one of my best friends from college describes The Damned as the best book nobody has ever read. So everybody's homework for this week before next week's live stream is to go to your local comic shop, pick up a copy of The Damned, and read it. That's Brian Hurt on art. Too. Mm -hmm. yeah, Brian's outstanding. Yeah, Brian, co-writer on Manor Black as well, published here, illustrated by Tyler Crook. So, yeah, I think Sixth Gun was my introduction to all three of those guys as well. I love Sixth Gun. Yeah, yeah super good. 
very excited to have that combo on um, Manor Black too. Oh. Ooh, excuse me. Plus, plus you. Dan, Dan's so excited about Manor Black. That oh, my he mask. Himself. <laughs> um, so yeah, Cyberpunk 2077, Trauma Team, number two. These issues have been really popular, so make sure you um, go to your comic shop and pick it up. But I, I would also suggest getting a subscription if you don't yeah. have one set up or like setting up a pull yeah. list. Um, most comic shops offer something like that. Yeah. Maybe they know how many to order and you make sure you get a copy. Yes. I know, I know those issue ones uh, became very difficult to get uh, within the first like week of it coming out. So if you don't want to miss out on these, as Gary said, get get a subscription box for sure. Yeah. And I know, you know, a lot of folks may be newer to comics and you know found out about it from video game. So yeah, that's a that's a thing you can do at comic shops, maybe kind of old school, but it works. So subscriptions and pull boxes and then you can go and and get your full comics pull every week or every month or however you want to do that so um it's, it's a nice way to go so um another comic that uh some fans might be excited about who are maybe Ooh. fans of a show uh the orville is back this week we have a new issue of the orville comics this is orville number two launch day part two of two um, so the way that we've been doing these Orville comics is they're released in pairs. Uh, this is the second pair so far. So there's two issues and they kind of combine to tell one story, sort of like a, an episode of the show or like a pair of episodes that tell one storyline. Um, and these are actually written by uh, David A. Goodman, who is one of the writers on the show. So very authentic. The art is by David Cabeza, who does an amazing job. Um, he's a big fan of the show. And you should follow him on social media because he's constantly posting little art teasers and um, interacting with fans. If you have questions about how he does uh, his amazing artwork for this series, he's very friendly and open and you should go find him on Twitter. Um, and then Michael Atia is a colorist for us on many series. He's the colorist on this one as well. So I just, we've, it's sad that we don't get to do cons in person this year because um, usually the cast of the Orville actually joins us for a signing during a con. And I, I am very happy to say that they are some of the nicest people, <laughs> like all of them. They're so nice and so pleasant to work with. So um, if you're a fan of the show, The Orville, these comics are, are definitely for you. They're very well done. Launch day, part two of two. Um, let's see, what is next on our list here? Oh, Dan, you have another one. Yes, I do. By Island. By Island. This comic's a lot of fun. So this is the uh, second issue of a four-issue series by Chelsea Kane, Leah Maternick, uh, Elise McCall, Michelle Rosenberg, and Joe uh, Caramagna. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's about a, a woman who's a super spy, and she arrives on this island of all these weird and quirky assassins and killers and super spies. And there's a murder in the waters of the island. And um, there's some weird mermaids involved that are just these kind of monstrous mermaids, not the pretty uh, Disney kind. Um, and there's uh, just a lot of weird esoteric stuff going on. And this island, by the way, is in the Bermuda Triangle. Mm -hmm. uh, and meanwhile, she's also learning about her missing father. Uh, I really don't want to spoil anything, but it's really good. So I should probably just stop there. But, uh, you know, if you're a fan of Mockingbird or Maneaters, I would definitely pick this one up. Yeah. But it's a great mystery. It's a lot of fun and the art kicks ass. The art yeah. is amazing. Uh, really clever. Cool. I really, I mean, so Leah does all the different covers for this. That's a lot of covers because um, there were three for the first issue. Um, yes. I can't decide which one. I like them both for this, but I think I like the tentacles. That one's really cool. Um, and also, I mean, it is a sequential comic, but you also get all these really fun designs they do. Mm -hmm. so there's a map of the island here. Like and fake then, uh, ads on the back here. The ads are cool. And then you also, uh, there's a cool martini list. Some of these martinis you can make at home. Uh, age rating, maybe about 14 plus or so. 
Mm -hmm. um, but this one's a lot of fun. I think it's a different kind of book for Dark Horse, and I think folks are gonna like it. Yeah, I'm. I'm a huge fan of Spy Island. That that issue one really hooked me. Cool. It's yeah. it's really fun. I really yeah. like it a lot. I have seen many positive reviews online, and I you're. Thank you for pointing out the. I haven't actually read this whole issue yet because I like to save them um, <laughs> and not spoil them for myself. But uh, I love fake ads. I don't know why. I just love fake ads. I think they add a lot. Like there's a lot of those in the cyberpunk art book too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think it adds so much environment. So Anthony, do you think that you would have this drink here with the- uh, Oh, let me- Is there like anchovies in there? Oh, um, hard Called pass. The mermaid chum punch. <laughs> yeah, hard pass for a couple of reasons. Chum being in the name of the drink is probably reason number one. Yeah. yeah. Kobe's is second reason and third reason is I am. Not, not really, even on a dare. Not, not really a big drinker. So uh, I think the one that I would do is the one with the skull. With the skull. Most of us would like to just drink out of a skull. I was just gonna say I've always wanted to drink out of a skull. That's yeah. like a dream of mine. None of those fake Don't skulls. Really yeah, know, yeah <laughs> fake skull, yeah. I like I like that existential dread. There's no recipe, you don't know what's in it. So Perfect. yeah, maybe I would try that. Like to live on the edge. Sounds like every morning waking up, you know. <laughs> yeah, the the mermaid chum punch. It's sort of like a bloody mary, but like more. My cats would swarm me and raid the um, anchovy garnish for Ooh, sure. So. Okay, I know people exist that like anchovies, <laughs> but I've never met one. <laughs> who wait? Who likes anchovies? Yeah. Oh, you were, where, what route are you going down here now, my friend? <laughs> I'm just, just saying, delicious. like, who likes them? Do you, Dan, do you like them? Yeah, of course. Anchovies are great. And what? they're good for you. They're bottom feeders. Not very you... high mercury. <laughs> nice and salty. You sound like somebody who's had to defend your dietary choices to people. You sound like a guy that eats pineapple on their pizza. And so yeah. I do not, sir. I will eat it in my fried rice, but I will not eat it on my pizza. I don't mind pineapple on it either. I'll eat anything. I or definitely like our, our entire office knows about Anthony's um interesting fast food eating Listen, preferences. <laughs> there's it's a beautiful big wide world of fast food eateries and options out there. God was <laughs> my oyster. We do like to discuss, you know, the the latest new weird flavor of um Oh, I don't know the latest new KFC creation or the new flavors of potato chips. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. these, these are the things we entertain ourselves with when we're There's not a lot of talking about stuff pumps. at Burgerville right now, you guys. Well, uh, Kraft mac and cheese made breakfast mac and cheese, and that was a topic of discussion a couple weeks ago. Anthony's usually the one that will have to dare to try whatever it is. It's not really a dare though, because like you have you to dare to make me aware <laughs> of it, and I'll try it. Uh, well, there is a strong I, I'll, I'll look into making some some versions of the cocktails in Spy Island, and you can be my taste testers. Um, yes. Uh, Dan, you can have the an anchovy one though, because yeah. Easy. Not not going there. Uh, Spy <laughs> Island. Dark Horse really after good. Dark Horse you, you should read it, everybody. Um, ooh, one more really cool single issue. Anthony is going to tell you about it. Yeah, bang number four. So. Um, this is Matt Canton, Wilfredo Torres' new series um, about a super spy named Thomas Cord. So, uh, like I said, Matt Canton is the writer, Wilfredo Torres uh, is illustrating, lettered by Nate Peoples of Blambot, colored by Neon Kim, um, and as always, a variant cover by Matt Kent. Um, again, you can purchase a uh, convention exclusive on direct.firecourse.com of bang number one with a actual sketch cover by Matt Kent on the cover. So that's always fun. Um, but yeah, this is, Dan, this is another one of your books that you're editing, uh, but this is a really cool, weird version uh, Matt Kent came up with of kind of old pulpy heroes. Um, kind of the biggest homage is um, a James Bond kind of super spy um, as evidenced by the protagonist named Thomas Cord. Uh, there's some weird dimension hopping stuff going on. There's just, it's, 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 it's mysteries within mysteries. And it's just really fun to watch it all kind of play out. Um, and 
Matt Kintz, uh, almost like no other, can really tie everything together in a really satisfying, almost effortless way, um, which is just super impressive. So if any of that sounds interesting to any of you, be sure to pick up uh, Bang Number 4 and also 3, 2, and 1, and also the trade when it comes out. It's fun. There's Keanu, no anchovies at all in Bang. There's no anchovies. So if you're like me, he loves it, and refuse to eat anchovies, <laughs> You're gonna like it. You said that though, like I wouldn't put it past Matt Kent to find a way to sneak in something fishy. I'll shut <laughs> up. Uh, I'm out of here. <laughs> this is entirely anchovy ratio. <laughs> Just dad jokes from here on out. Yep, yep. That's that's it. You're not invited back. It's all over. Oh, great. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we also there are a lot of cool little short trailer videos uh for bang that we we put together earlier this year um my colleague kelly westner worked on a lot of those um she does a lot of our book trailers they're really fun to watch we have like a full bang playlist on our youtube so you should check that out um we're just dark horse comics on youtube as well um if you need a little taste of bang if you haven't tried it yet mm-hmm. um well and that is the last bang, of our you haven't scenes. tried out oh, anything else on that kent Ether, Department H, Three Story. Mind Management. Mind Management. <laughs> he does some books he's, for other publishers too. He's done a few. He knows he knows Keanu. He does know Keanu. <laughs> the Keanu cro- quote on some of these issues is a real Keanu quote. Yeah. You can go back uh, on our YouTube channel. I believe it's on our YouTube channel. Um, and watch our San Diego Comic-Con at Home panel. Uh, moderated by yours truly with uh, Matt Kent, Nettie Okorafor, and Gerard Way on it and watch them all talk about their books and Matt talks about Bang and Ether and my management and a bunch of his other projects here. So that's fun. Yeah, and the VOD for this, the video on demand, all of our streams go on our YouTube channel the following week. So you can watch this again, but yeah, check out our YouTube channel. We continue to fill it up with all of these streams and our convention streams. So that New York Comic Con panel that I mentioned earlier, um, once it's up on their YouTube, we'll add it to ours as well. So kind of a one-stop shop for all of our video content. And um, for anybody who misses these live streams, although you can't win the uh, prizes, unfortunately, after the fact, you can still watch as we go through the whole new comic book day rundown. Um, and just you, comment you to- Odin on the YouTube video. Just, I just want to see like 200 comments of people just typing in Odin on the YouTube. It, it does happen when we like, if we run something as a premiere, uh, we'll, we'll be as clear as possible. You know, this is a recording. This is so everybody can watch this, but we want to, you know, like make it another big fun event so you can participate in, in the chat that day. But yeah, we'll still get tons of giveaway entries no matter what. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, so that's, uh, that's still available on our YouTube, the San Diego Comic-Con panel. There's a short playlist for San Diego Comic-Con actually, because it includes the Eisner Awards also. Um, and a few other videos too. So uh, we'll probably put one together, a, a short playlist for the New York videos as well, once they're all up and online. Um, so that is the last of our single issues that are new this week, but we do have a few more books to tell you about. Um, one that is near and dear to my own heart is Witchfinder, uh, which is a Mike Mignola verse universe uh, ongoing comic series. Um, So this is Witchfinder Volume 6, The Reign of Darkness, which is now available in a trade paperback. Um, So Mike Mignola co-writes these with Chris Roberson, who is one of those New York Comic Con panelists. Um, Super nice guy. Uh, Hi, Chris. I I don't think we've had him on a stream yet, but we should do that soon. Um, So Chris Roberson is a co-writer on most of the Witchfinder series, and uh, the artist on this particular one is Christopher Mitten, um, fantastic artist, and lettered by Clem Robbins, who is a frequent letterer on the Mignola books, colors by Michelle Madsen, also a frequent Mignola uh, contributor, and the cover art, which we are looking at on the stream, is by Julian Totino Tedesco. Uh, some nice blood red eyeball ravens um, to give you a sense of the doom of Witchfinder. Now, I, I love Witchfinder. It's uh, the main character is Sir Edward Grey, and he is the Witchfinder in the service of the Queen of England. And so we have this Victorian London setting um, in this particular series, which is collected in the Reign of Darkness. Uh, they're actually searching for Jack the Ripper. 
So if you love Victorian kind of horror, if you love Jack the Ripper stories, if you love the Mignolaverse at large and you haven't tried Witchfinder yet, I highly recommend it. I really enjoy Witchfinder. And I think it kind of flies under the radar a bit, at least compared to Hellboy and BPRD. But again, if you like that more Victorian touch uh, in your kind of horror stories, then I, again, can't recommend this highly enough. I really like the uh, second one, the Western. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Just very <laughs> different with the EC uh, artist, John Severin did it too. It's his mm -hmm. last comic. Oh, wow, I didn't know it was his last one. He was drawing uh, that and he was almost 90 years old. He might have been he might have been past 90 when he was drawing it. Jeez. Still, still comicking. Um, but yeah, so as I said, this one is volume six. And so these each collect a full uh, mini series in each volume. So you've got a lot of Witchfinder to enjoy if you haven't tried it yet. And so that one's new at comic shops today and should be in bookstores in about two weeks. Um, I will also mention before we move on that one of my favorite characters in this series um, is featured prominently in this particular mini series and that is Sarah Jewell, uh, the occult adventurer and she is a badass. So yeah, read, read Witchfinder and uh, tell me what to think about Sarah and how she teams up with Ever Gray because it's good, it's good. Let's see, what is next on our list? Oh, a little book, a little book that we've been uh, talking up for a little while now. I'm gonna hold it up while Anthony. So out <laughs> now in pretty much everywhere you can buy books, comic shops, bookshops, uh, is Daddy Daughter Day written by Isabel Bridges Bosch, I believe is how her last name is pronounced and illustrated by uh, her father, award-winning actor, Jeff Bridges. Uh, is Daddy Daughter Day, and it is a uh, children's book about spending time with your parents and kids, and it's just very wholesome, very interesting to look at. Um, Jeff Bridges has a very interesting art style, um, and it's just, it's a, it's a lot of fun. It's very cute that um, Isabel and Jeff did it together, um, very personal for both of them. And if you want, uh, I believe tomorrow at 9.40 a.m., Jeff Bridges is going to be on the Today Show talking about Daddy Daughter Day. So that's fun. They did a live signing event yesterday, too, on mm -hmm. Facebook and other online sources. Um, they've been, the, Jeff and his daughter, Isabel, who did this together, as Anthony said, um, it's very sweet and they're very they're very excited about it um we really appreciate them taking the time to do events uh to kind of tell you what it's all about and coming up this weekend there is a holiday um actually created by Smokey robinson which is kind of cool um who apparently had six daughters and so he came up with the idea of father daughter day and so that this year is falling on a sunday so we will be doing some more Daddy Daughter Day events um, focused around that. Stay tuned on Dark Horse social media and our website to see uh, what we've got planned. But just some fun interactive um, celebrations of family, not necessarily fathers and daughters because we know not everybody is one or either of those, but uh, celebrating family and spending time together and um, just a nice day to, to enjoy those kinds of things. So um, more to come on that front. As I said, stay tuned for some more announcements and Daddy Daughter Day is a fun picture book available now. Uh, if you got it on the live sign, then you got it signed by both Jeff and Isabel, which is pretty cool. And we are near the end of our uh, new comics for this week and the giveaway winner will be drawn in just a few minutes here. So stay tuned. If you haven't already entered, the keyword is Odin. All you need to do is enter that in chat once and only once, and it will be counted. And uh, we have one more new kids book out this week, uh, Plants vs. Zombies, volume 17. So Plants vs. Zombies is an ongoing comic series we've been publishing for a while. It's really fun. They're all written by Paul Tobin, who is a master of puns and um, amazing humor. He also consults on the games, which is pretty cool. So he's very plugged into the Plants vs. Zombies world. Um, we did a live drawing stream with uh, regular artist Ron Chan and also Kat Ferris earlier this year with Paul Tobin as well. So you can still see that on our YouTube too. Um, so this is, as I said, volume 17. 
and its pun tastic title is multi ballistic. So volume 17, multi ballistic. Uh, this is another battle between plants and zombies as Dr. Zomboss turns the entirety of Neighborville into a giant fully functional pinball machine. I wonder if that was inspired by some Dark Horse uh, colleagues, actually. <laughs> we, we have some pinball enthusiasts. If you watched our Bill and Ted stream a couple weeks ago, uh, we talk about pinball quite a bit. Um, so Nate, Patrice, and their plant posse must find a way to revert Neighborville to its normal state and halt this uniquely horrifying zombie invasion. With every ball and bumper set against them, will they hit a run of zombie knockout skill shots, or will the battle go full tilt zombies? So. Plants vs. Zombies, really fun. Kids really like these. Um, definitely, if you've got a kid at home who likes comics or maybe even needs some encouragement to get reading, uh, these are a great enticement for that. So uh, this is available at comic shops today. And again, uh, bookstores in about two weeks. And um, volume 17, these are all hardcover volumes, so they're nice and sturdy. And we do box sets as well. So we just had a box set come out that contains the previous three volumes. So. There's a lot, a lot of Plants vs. Zombies for any kids or adults who like PVZ. Um, you can see them all on our website and you can find the reading order there as well. Um, and that wraps up our new releases for the week. Uh, Dan and Anthony, are there any, any other notes you want to add about anything we talked about today, Norse mythology, anything else? Um, I know that uh, there was talk of x-ray robot at one point and so i know that anthony we just announced uh yep. a new madman uh universe library edition so this will be one of several volumes that will collect all of mike allred's work um his madman focus work and also uh, comics like x-ray robot that have um subtle threads to that universe so if you're a big yep. mike allred fan or uh, Madman fan, like I grew up reading those comics, so it's really great and cool to see that there's going to be a complete series of yep. fancy editions of them coming out soon. Um, it's definitely yeah, worth pre-ordering those. So the, the Allreds are very, an amazing family, and some nice. of these will be in color for the first time too. Yep, and I mean Madman too. Um, just that whole stuff like x-ray robot those those comics have been published over a variety of publishers over the years um that has been putting those out so having them all now collected into a nice hardcover through us is is awesome and makes it much easier for fans on board and read and yeah uh pick up all that stuff that you maybe haven't had a chance to see since some of that stuff came out in like the 90s and early 2000s so yeah yeah, that's thank you for calling that out, Dan. Yeah, we just just announced that it'll be um, available in the previews catalog for comic shops very soon, and it's up on Penguin Random House now for for book retailers and for pre-orders. So, yeah, very exciting. Um, it's it's nice to have that uh, to kind of supplement X-ray Robot for sure. Yeah, which you should also read if you haven't. Uh, issue two just came out, so there's a couple now for you to, to get in on. And you can get <laughs> shit. And you yeah, convention exclusive, nothing happened. The convention <laughs> exclusive Christian Ward variant on direct.darkhorse.com. It's like hanging yeah. out with a sailor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, we did draw uh, our giveaway winner. Coffee. Congratulations to, this is a long screen name, awfully good oxymoron. Uh, you win all of the single issues that we talked about today. So send us a whisper on Twitch and we will get your information so we can get these shipped out to you soon. Uh, congrats and thank you everybody who has been participating in the chat today. Um, we will share all the details of all the panels we talked about earlier for New York Comic Con on our social media and on our website. So um, look there for those. And uh, as always, we'll be back next week here on Twitch for the regular weekly Wednesday new comic book day rundown. And before then, make sure to check back in on Friday for our Stranger Things and D&D &D stream because we're going to talk about the comics and then we're going to play some D&D, &D, which I'm very excited about. So uh, that's on Friday. Uh, time and details are posted here on Twitch. And uh, other than that, we'll be back Wednesday. Thank you, Dan. And thank you, Anthony, for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me. And uh, that's, that's it. We will let you all go on about your day. Go get some comics. Bye.
See you next time. Before the beginning, there was nothing. No earth, no heavens, no stars, no sky. Only the mist world, formless and shapeless. And the fire world, always burning. In Jotunheim, the home of the giants, is Mimir's well. Mimir, the wise one, the guardian of memory, knows many things. His well is wisdom. The ash tree grows between the nine worlds and joins them each to each. The dragon Nidhogg lives in these waters and it is always gnawing at the root from below. At the edge of the flame stood Sota. He will go forth from Muspel with his flaming sword and burn the world with fire and one by one the gods will fall before him.